So I want to say that I've always been creative, but I think the the major point for me was around the age of 13. So when I got my first computer, basically, um, at the time I was mainly like mm. uh, designing like MSN profile pictures, MySpace uh, layouts and uh, Bebo skins. Yeah. Uh, and then it just slowly evolved. And I was starting, you know, making artworks for my friends, like album artwork. Um, then I moved on to like t-shirts. Um, so I was like, I had a small little uh, clothing mm. brand that was mainly like electronic music uh, merchandise. Um, and then I, over time, I, I just slowly gravitated towards like more computer art. So after the, the clothing business, I kind of focused on just doing like freelance or um, you know, design works. Um, and then, you know, I needed to kind of build a website. So I just learned how to code like many using WordPress at the time. And then in the stroke of like random luck, I, I ended up getting a, a junior role at a, a web agency. So that's kind of when my code kind mm. of went from a uh, basic bitch to a, uh, you know, <laughs> full on uh, professional. <laughs> so uh, around that time, mm -hmm. there was um, Mr. Doob. He was like really, I mean, he created like uh, 3.js. So he's like one of the founders of 3.js. So I, I got really infatuated with the whole idea of like doing 3D in the web browser. So I was making like a video, uh, sorry, uh, sound uh, visualizers using like the SoundCloud API. And yeah, it's just kind of ramped up over time. It's just, I have like ADHD, you know, mm. I'm just, I can't keep attention on anything. So I just, anything that gravitates mm. or, you know, pulls my, my interest, I kind of just focus on that really. Because you also incorporate music, right? And sounds um, into some of your work. At least I have seen you, you know, playing with uh, music and tunes. Is that um, something that, you know, you, you, were, you were doing uh, previously or just, you know, curious? So it's a bit of both. So, you know, prior to kind of the, the whole finger coder um, era, you could say, um, I was working uh, with like a lot of musicians. So I was doing like A&R uh, works with like a couple of record labels. And, you know, I also had like a small indie label where we'd release uh, music like once a month or like every so many months. So I've always had like um, passion for merging technology with the creative arts and at the time the best way that i could do that was you know building like um online kind of uh, platforms or you know online solutions uh for artists to use to promote their music uh whether that's like landing pages um or any you know any kind of tool that they might ne they might need to help promote their music so with um mm. i guess how i kind of started finger code it was on the back end of the the, the record label i was running um, so we did a couple of events um, up and down the country. Um, so I, I thought the best way that this event could kind of work is if we can create like a whole visual experience. So that's how I learned um, how to use Touch Designer and you know how to incorporate live sound and visuals and everything. But at the time, you know, paying somebody to do this was quite expensive, and I figured, well, I'm fairly technical, mm -hmm. so I might as well learn. And you know, if worst comes to worst, I have a new skill set. Um, and I've just kind yeah. of evolved from that. Uh, with regards yeah. to like, uh, so I mean, some of my work has um, audio aspects. So like my first couple of NFTs that I've released, they were mainly like video works. So I, I would visualize the sound yeah. and, you know, save that as a video and then, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. So I see a lot of um, yeah, creative coders working closely with musicians. And, and that's, I think, also your, your case, at least early on. What about NFTs? When, when did you discover uh, blockchain NFTs? When did that happen? So I want to say probably around like late 2020, early 2021. Um, but I didn't actually really dive into it too much because, you know, it was such a foreign concept and the platforms that we have today just didn't exist at the time. So you needed to you know, do a bit more work to get your head around it. So mm -hmm. I didn't really actually put anything onto the blockchain until late 2021. Um, and this was after meeting uh, Dimitri, Sophia and Spongenuity for the first time. But we had like been following each other on Instagram for maybe a year or so prior to that. So it wasn't until I actually met them, mm -hmm. I sat down with uh, Dimitri and Spongenuity and uh, they were like, you know, you should try, you know, and try it out and see what happens. Mm. And then the following day, I was on the train home. I was talking to Ajax Shell as well at the time and, uh, to kind of, you know, help me, help me give a little push on Twitter. And um, here I am today. 